As winter took hold, Royal Enfield whisked us away to sunny California for a closer look at their latest creation on the 650 platform, their fifth, or perhaps sixth, offering in this lineup. California, with its endless blue skies, winding roads, and deep ties to Royal Enfield's legacy, has served as the launch pad for four out of these five models. And their newest edition proudly embraces a slice of that heritage. Just outside Los Angeles lies Big Bear, a spot renowned for its serene lake, but even more so for the legendary Big Bear Run desert races of the 1960s. This was a motorcycling mecca, a place where history was made. We were lucky enough to hear it firsthand from Eddie Mulders, an 80-year-old legend who still remembers the thrill of the dirt under his wheels. At just 16, Mulders outran 764 competitors in a single day, taking the crown on a Royal Enfield 500 outfitted with novel tires. That makeshift scrambler didn't just win him a race. It launched his career in racing and stunt work and cemented the Big Bear Run as a landmark event for aspiring riders. Around the same era, Royal Enfield began exporting the Interceptor to the American market, adapting the bikes with novel tires to channel that scrambler vibe. If the history books are right, US spec models carried the engine prefix VX, with the X signifying its experimental nature. Now, drawing inspiration from the VX Interceptor and honoring the legacy of Big Bear, we have the brand new Royal Enfield Bear 650. The Bear 650 takes the Interceptor 650 and transforms it into a scrambler built for adventure. Sure, some of us might have hoped for a bold leap, perhaps a 750 cubic centimeters powerhouse like the VX Interceptor to really shake things up. But Royal Enfield has wisely stuck with their proven 650 cubic centimeters twin cylinder platform, honing it to perfection. The result? A refined, capable machine that's ready to carry the Scrambler's spirit forward. Design and ergonomics. The Scrambler DNA of the Bear 650 is unmistakable. A lifted rear fender, race-inspired oval number plates on the side panels, a high riding stance, and those rugged knobby tires. While these tires might remind you of Pirelli Rally STRs, they're actually MRF's take, designed to keep costs and availability practical without compromising style. Opt for the black paint scheme, and the golden forks pop even more dramatically, giving the bike an extra dose of attitude. You've got five color options to choose from, including a special Eddie Mulder's edition, complete with his racing number 249 and a teal frame that nods to the classic Trials edition. Picking a favorite is no easy task since each colorway exudes charm. Pair the bike with the vintage-style Fuel X Royal Enfield riding gear, and you'll look like you've rolled straight out of the archives of a 1960s Big Bear run. Whether that gear makes it to your local market remains uncertain, especially given potential pricing constraints, suspension, and wheels. Underneath its retro-inspired looks, the Bear 650 is built for the job. It features upside-down Showa forks, similar to the Shotgun 650, but with longer travel tubes. At the rear, conventional Showa shocks handle the suspension duties, ditching the gas-charged units found on the interceptor. This setup provides 130 mm of front and 115 mm of rear travel, giving the Bear a slightly taller and more off-road-ready stance. The Bear rides on a 19-inch front wheel and a 17-inch rear, paired with two type tires, giving it an impressive 184 millimeters of ground clearance. For comparison, the Interceptor 650 runs 18-inch wheels front and back, so this is a clear shift towards scrambler ergonomics. Unfortunately, you can't simply swap the tubeless rims from the Himalayan due to their differing sizes. While some Interceptor owners have experimented with off-road focused wheels and tires, replicating the bare setup on an Interceptor would require some hub modifications, braking, and details. The Bear's braking system gets some thoughtful upgrades. The front disc retains the Interceptor's 320mm diameter but features a newly designed rotor, 
while the rear steps up to a 270 mm disc bar from the Super Meteor. A bump from the interceptor is 240 mm. The hollow front hub design adds a distinct look while keeping the overall vibe consistent with the bike's rugged yet refined character. In every detail, the Bear 650 captures the essence of a scrambler while adding modern upgrades to ensure it's not just about appearances. It's ready to handle both the trail and the road with ease. Rider foot pegs have been moved forward and the handlebars are slightly raised and pulled back for a more relaxed seated position, making it easier to stand up when tackling rougher terrain. The rib seat is flat, as a scrambler should be, but has a bit of a rear tick up. Royal Enfield has also beefed up the subframe and neck of the chassis to improve load bearing capacity and make off-road riding more robust. Engine. The Bear's power comes from the tried and true 650 cubic centimeters twin, keeping the interceptor's 47 PS output, but adding an 8% torque boost for a total of 56.5 Newton meters. RE claims that the entire torque curve has been lifted, giving an even better throttle response. The interceptor never felt underpowered in the mid range, and the Bear only improves on this. The torque upgrade shines in third gear, letting you comfortably chug along at 30 to 40 kilometers per hour without knocking, and in fifth gear at 50 kilometers per hour for smooth cruising. Even off-road tractability is quite good, and the stronger low-end torque helps compensate for the Bear's hefty build. Off-road capability. That said, I would stick to mild off-road trails. The Bear's 2-into-1 exhaust with a stubby canister sheds nearly 10 kilograms over the interceptor, thanks in part to a neatly hidden underbody collection chamber for emissions. Yet, with extra suspension, beefier tires, and added frame strengthening, the Bear 650 is only 2 kilograms lighter than the interceptor in summation, making it a hefty piece of kit. This is no lightweight, and while it'll handle some dirt and shallow river crossings with ease, you might want to think twice about tackling challenging trails. It's not playing in the same sandbox as the X-Pulse, Himalayan, or 390 Adventure, and needs a seasoned off-road rider to really push it in the challenging terrain. If proper adventure riding is on your radar, the Himalayan remains your best bet. It's lighter, lower, and simply easier to wrangle, ride, and handling. The bare suspension shines on twisty roads. Offering confidence from the front, those forks inspire some swagger in the bends, even with the Nobla tires. The rear, though, can feel a bit firm, especially on quick direction changes. With wildfires limiting access to Big Bear, we headed down the San Bernardino National Forest roads and into Coachella Valley, with its share of bumps and cracks. The bare suspension handled them admirably, absorbing them without a fuss. The weight does rear its head if you need to adjust your line mid-corner, but once you settle in, the bear is immense fun on the twisties. Remember my Shotgun 650 review enthusiasm? Well, the bear might just top it. The braking, despite having the same master cylinder, hoses, and calipers as its siblings, feels enhanced thanks to the suspension, lighter wheels, and grip of the MRF tires. Hard braking will reveal some tire skittering due to the tread pattern, but I'd keep these tires swapping them out for road-focused rubber would strip the bear of its scrambler.